start. Uh, so welcome to the uh, first session in the morning. Uh, so this session is about the model phenomena in solids and cold atoms. Uh, so we have four talks. The first uh, speaker is Patrick Lee, but I don't care about this, but it's the uh, transport. Yeah. Well, you are. Yeah, so one, and thank you for getting up. I know it's not easy for theoretical businesses. Yeah, so uh, I want to tell about the you know, wild thing about wild going on to the magnetic field. And uh, so my plan is to do the following. I, I uh, give a brief introduction to power semi metals in uh, solids and talk about the current status of parallel anomaly uh, application. And then I'm going to focus on two uh, new pieces of work uh, on two different materials. Uh, one is this, uh, and I'll introduce them as I go along. Um, uh, uh, so this is a variant on, uh, I think power anomaly is a quite mature uh, subject right now, so I'm going to talk about some further development, development on these lines, and uh, that is just, uh, this is a disruption of the power anomaly, if you like, there's a gap opening, and there's a possibility of seeing a, a new phenomenon, namely uh, a cylinder with a metallic stick on the side, side surface, not a top part. And then the second one, uh, so this is discussed in this, uh, I'm going to get into this. Uh, the second uh, topic is, uh, so this work is mainly done by my former postdoc, uh, Jake Kitten, uh, uh, Chan. And the second work is really a uh, experimental, I want to give you uh, an experimental story about this material, where it is claimed that we uh, uh, observed for the first time a three-dimensional uh, uh, digital polymorphic. And uh, then, the, of course, the outcome is a sort of a chiral metal on a cylinder, right? So it's a metallic uh, surface state. And that work is uh, mainly uh, done by Li Yuan Zhang in China. Um, and uh, I, I consulted with them and they put my name on it. So at least if you want to search for it, you can just look under my name. And on that. <coughs> okay, so while semi metal. Uh, so this goes way back uh, with this. Uh, really first discussed by Conscious Pairing in uh, 1937. I think in this room, Bert and I are the only people who have uh, the privilege of knowing Conscious from the lab. Pretty sure of that. <coughs> and uh, so back in 1937, he was a graduate student of Wigner in Princeton. And uh, he came up with this uh, remarkable insight. And he was considering uh, accidental degeneracy of uh, bands, right? So if you have two bands that want to cross each other, uh, what would happen? So he considered non-degenerate band, so presumably a spin orbit coupling uh, split the spin degeneracy. And so, uh, as you know, uh, when you have uh, two bands crossing, generally the uh, hybridization um, right, goes like this, right? So that's the famous example. You have two bands to hybridize in general on the cap, right? So if you want this uh, hybridization to be zero, right? Then you have to you have three conditions: the energy has to be zero, and the complex uh, overlap matrix time has to be zero. So there are three conditions. In three dimensions, you can tune, you can move around in K space. So generically, in principle, you can find a single point which satisfies this condition, right? So in three dimension, the band passing is very special in that you can uh, find a, a single point, and around that point, and you expand. And you get a bar, uh, etc. Okay, so that was a great insight uh, that we had. Um, <coughs> right? Um, yeah, so these are accidental crossing, and they would uh, live somewhere in the middle of some real one zone, would not generally, generally would not be in the, in the uh, in some symmetry uh, point. And uh, 80 years uh, since that time, we've learned a few things. Uh, so I think the two main pieces, and, and this Subject was revived by our chairman, uh, Ashwin, and also uh, worked by Jing Ren and, and Balance. And uh, we learned two things uh, in the last 80 years. Right? One is that topology, right? So the idea of, uh, of uh, chirality uh, and, uh, and that these are actually uh, monopoles and anti monopoles of, uh, of, uh, of um, various curvature. Uh, from that, uh, uh, Ashwin and, and Ying Ren deduce this uh, wonderful prediction of, uh, of uh, Fermi arcs on the <coughs> surface, right? And uh, which has been seen experimentally. Uh, 
The second uh, advance is that now people can do very accurate calculation on uh, local density function method. And so once it's uh, become once the subject become fashionable, people can uh, predict uh, many many materials that actually uh, exhibit these fermions. Now to be of interest, uh, it's not we need the solid fermion to be near the Fermi surface, right? Because if they're buried deep down or unoccupied, then it's very hard to to, to see the consequence, right? So. Uh, and then these people, uh, I think, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, C. Dai is one of the uh, leaders who uh, people come up with many, many predictions, and many of them have been confirmed. Uh, so part of what I want to do is to introduce you to some of the materials as well. That's been a success story. So the wild fermion is a, uh, the electronic spectrum is uh, spin on degenerate because we want this accidental passing of the non degenerate band, right? So, and so this can be described by a two by two matrix in general, right? And uh, and uh, these are chiral; they can define a chirality, and therefore these modulos can only come in pairs. And they can be a the chirality. Uh, they're not local. Uh, these are already recognized by Heron. They're, they're somewhere in the middle of the brain. And uh, perturbation; they are very stable because you have exhausted all possible. Uh, uh, parameters. So if you change these parameters, all you can do is to move these nodes around. You cannot open a gap, right? Because you have already have three equations instead of five. Importantly, uh, there's a time reversal and inversion breaking. Um, so in order to to have this non-degenerate uh, band, you have to either break time reversal or break inversion. Otherwise, you have two pairs sitting on top of each other, and you form a single uh, gapless uh, Dirac system. Okay, so you, you'll need those. <coughs> Okay, so the famous uh, consequence of this is a uh, chiral anomaly when you have two uh, uh, points. And uh, for solid state physics, of course, uh, anomaly is a misnomer because we have no anomaly in solids. We always have a cutoff. So everything here can be understood in terms of, uh, of uh, basic uh, Boltzmann transport at uh, uh level. And, uh, and this was, of course, recognized by, by this famous paper of. Uh, Now, yeah, Newton doesn't know me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we have two wild, wild nodes in a magnetic field. Uh, there's a zero mode. But in the z direction, along the magnetic field direction, it disperses linearly. Right. And because of the chirality, one moves to the right and one moves to the left. Right. So these are the chiral uh, 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 And if you apply electric field uh, gradient, then the uh, electrons by, you know, it, from Astro and Merman, we know that k dot equals g, e, right? So the electric field would drive uh, uh, states from the left to the right. So uh, then you, you pump charge from left to the right, okay? And that's because underneath here, they're connected. But we know that if you have a lattice, these two bands are connected. Well, if you didn't want to know about this, uh, uh, what's happening underneath here, as a particle physicist would, would want to do, then this seems very mysterious, the charges are there's a period on the left and a period on the right, and that's what they call it anomaly. But for us, you know, this is very normal. Okay? And the consequence of this is that uh, there is a uh, transport rate, so there's, there's a conductivity that goes at E dot B. Right? So this is uh, rather unusual, but uh, uh, E is just from the uh, um, uh, transport equation, and B is just counting the number of states. So you can easily work out the E dot B uh, just by counting and uh, so on. So, uh, in, the, in 2013, there are several claims of uh, observing chiral anomaly in real uh, solid state physics. Uh, this is one of them uh, by Ong, uh, group in Princeton. And so uh, this is magnetic resistance. Uh, as you lower the temperature, you can see that, uh, uh, let's see, how does it work? Yeah, so there's a big negative magnetic resistance, right? So if you, if you apply magnetic field, the, uh, the, the conductivity yeah, this is resistivity. resistivity drops by you know, a factor of 10, or well, a large factor anyway, right? And so they further uh, show that this, uh, because it's E dot B, so as you rotate the B, let's say you apply a field in the plane, if you rotate the field, then the, the, the conductivity would, would move around the plane. So they describe it uh, as a uh, current plume steered by magnetic field very uh, poetically, right? Uh, so, so, so that's the... Uh, so this is one of them, and, and observed in a material called sodium 
three bisplat. Yeah, by the way, these are all materials that you know, I've been doing solar cell physics for many years. I've never heard of any of these guys that uh, came out of the woodworks. And they come from part of the periodic table that we don't pay attention to, usually, the heavy elements. <coughs> right, so the current status is uh, everything I know is uh, from this recent review by, uh, by uh, Pan Hong. So there are two materials. Uh, in these materials, uh, time reversal, they, have, um, uh, they actually have time reversal and inversion symmetry. So uh, at zero field, there's no while, but there, there's just a direct point. And by applying magnetic field, you break time reversal and you separate the while. Okay, so the part of the thing is the magnetic field creates this while node at the same time, give you the chiral number. Okay? And, um, right. Now, interestingly, these uh, samples are very disordered, have very low mobility. Another material is called tandem diarsenate, uh, tandem arsenate, which I'll tell you more about. In this case, these wandos are intrinsic because uh, inversion symmetry is broken, right? So they are already separated in zero field. And in fact, there are too many, there are a lot of wandos. There are two sets, there are two pairs, four pairs of so called W1 and 8 pairs. So there are 12 pairs of wandos altogether. Uh, now, these are very high mobility. So Wao makes a point that if you have a system of very high mobility, seeing the steering of the current by the plume, uh, this plume uh, may not be an uh, indication of a chiral anomaly because there's a very simple classical jetting effect. If you, have, if you have ballistic transport in the magnetic field, the current, the charge wants to move along the field because the charge's direction is a synchrotron orbit, <laughs> right? So uh, just classically, you would have this pluming effect, okay, right, because the the electron will move easily along the field, but move, it's very difficult to transfer to the field. So um, sigma xx is much bigger than sigma yy for field along x, right? So this, so, so they claim that uh, um, if you have high mobility, then then it can be obscured, it can be misled. Okay? And similarly, uh, there's another material called zirconium telluride. Uh, uh, in this case, we have a direct point at the gamma point, at the zone center, there's a single direct point with a very small gap. And uh, um, yeah, so I'll tell much more about this. And again, in this case, a uh, jamming effect may be, may be dominant because the mobility is extremely high. Okay, so I think this article concludes that uh, these two, the observation, so all, in all these materials, people have claimed to see this uh, chiral anomaly, but uh, Ong uh, thinks that these two may be the only so true candidates where the other ones are, maybe not. Okay, so that's it, as far as I understand the status, the current status. Okay, so, so that's my uh, review. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So what, what the new things I want to talk about are these two topics. The first question I will have is, what about if I apply a B view in the Z direction? So, so this tandem diastole is kind of a layer structure. So the experiment searching for chiral anomaly, you apply a view in the plane, right? So you can steer this plume of, uh, of current in the plane. So if I apply a magnetic field uh, perpendicular to it, what happens? Okay. It turns out you should kill the chiral anomaly, and you end up with an insulator. Um, right. And then, okay. uh, the second thing is, it turns out that this Zirconium telluride is the same material, I call this a magical material, where people uh, tend to see a three dimensional quantum Hall effect. Okay. Now, this is three dimensional in, this, in a genuine sense, it's not just stacking of two dimensional quantum Hall. So, this is something new. Okay, so let me go to the first topic, introduce you to, to tandem arsenate. Uh, so, there are, if you look at the XY plane, there are four sets of. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Can, yeah. you, can you explain a bit about the three D quantum Hall effect? I will. I'll get there okay. in more detail later. Okay. Yeah, I'll get there. Three D conductivity is not a universal. Yeah, I'll, I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me talk about this, uh, this first. Uh, right. So there are four pairs of these wild nodes. So the color is the uh, is the two kind, kinds of chirality, and they live in the middle of the zone as promised. Right. And they're intrinsic because there's a in, intrinsic uh, breaking of uh, inversion symmetry. So in the in the this is a cut of the k z to zero plane. There are four pairs. If I make a cut at five, the, the other this is called a w one mm -hmm. node. 
And on the, if I go on top of this layer and the bottom of this layer, there are four, four more sets on each, and they're going to double two nodes. Okay? So they're in, in total 24 wild nodes. Okay? Uh, when it rains, it pours, I guess. Uh, right. So um, I was interested in this experiment in Ramshaw at, at all. Um, they find that, you know, they were saying, uh, they were looking for, for a while for, for um, the measure row exit to the fungal magnetic field. They were looking for this chiral anomaly. Indeed, initially, it seems to go down, right? So you get, you, you get uh, this uh, enhancement of conductivity. But then, uh, beyond a certain magnetic field, uh, beyond 50 tesla, it suddenly goes up. The resistivity goes up. And in fact, this uh, looks like it's opening a gap. Right? It becomes activated. Right? So your magnetic field, so this is a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the thing, unlike what it's done before. So it looks like you actually create an insulator with a magnetic field instead of making better conductivity. Um, and there's some more interesting things going on at 90 tesla. So these are quite these are pulse fields, very difficult. <coughs> okay, so the gap opens when this thing is comparable to the yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, we took a look at this, and uh, uh, we, the explanation is quite simple. And uh, in fact, a similar uh, explanation was given uh, by, by Jang et al. Okay, so the idea is the following. Uh, if you apply the field in a uh, perpendicular direction, so, okay, the previous, yeah, previously in a, in a plane in a parallel direction, uh, the, um, the, the the two mode nodes are separate in K, KZ space, right? But if I uh, apply in the Z direction, uh, th this will be the right mover and this is the left mover, right? So I I take the previous part and shift them so they line up each other, right? Because uh, KZ the Z direction is common for the two line nodes. They both go through k z equals zero. Okay. Well, then you can see that they cross. Right. Previously, they're separated in k z space. But when they cross, then they get hybridized. Right. So we can open the gap here. Now, what, when you can open, what, why this gap would uh, will be large when the condition is that the uh, when the separation between these nodes uh, is comparable to the lambda level uh, inverse of the lambda uh, <coughs> level radius. Right. Because the in the magnetic field, the land, the uh, momentum in sp the spatial part is made out, right? So that, that uh, you can have this number. So the calculation shows that uh, the gap will open up uh, very quite abruptly when this uh, condition is satisfied. Is that clear? It is very reasonable. Okay. And experimentally, then they indeed uh, try to fit this uh, 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 activation by a gap, and indeed it looks like it's open up quite quite abruptly. Uh, you know, there are a lot of details about W1, W2, and so on, but let me not worry about it. Okay. So that's the first uh, interesting story. Uh, turns out that uh, something else happens. If you keep uh, increasing field uh, beyond 80 Tesla, you see that uh, as you lower the temperature, the, um, the resistivity decreases. So now this is an uh, insulator, um, but it becomes, again, metallic again. Right? It looks like it's becoming better conductor. Okay? And there are separate experiment from um, sound of television indicating that there's a phase transition around 80 Tesla. It's a, just a technical point. So this is uh, rather strange because uh, usually when you have a phase transition in solid, you, if you open a gap, then the resistivity will go up. But here, the, the, associated with this phase transition, the resistivity goes down. Okay? It becomes a better conductor. Uh, so this is a little unusual. So uh, we made a proposal of this, and the bottom line is that we think the extra conductivity may be due to the appearance of some edge states uh, in this very high field limit. So how does that work? Well, basically I was reminded of a, a work that I, I did with Avenin and uh, Levitov uh, some years ago, seven years ago, in the context of graphene. In the graphene, uh, we have uh, a degenerate, four full degenerate states, right, from this uh, Iraq fermion. And, uh, uh, um, yeah, and if you go to the edge, two of them move, move up if you approach the uh, solid wall, and two of them move down, the middle one, right, because they have to be symmetric, right, unlike conventional wall effects. So this is the famous uh, uh, Halprin picture of the, of the uh, uh, thing moving up towards the edge, but here they, they two go up, two goes down, right. <coughs> Furthermore, if you, if the spin is good at quantum, since spin is a good quantum number, if you apply the magnetic field, you can split the two bands, right? Then you have a situation where the blue guys move out and the red guys move down, right? So at the Fermi level, you have a situation where you have two, two bands crossing, and they are moving with opposite spin and opposite uh, velocity, 
right? The slope is the velocity. Okay, so this is the classical a helical edge state, right? And so this is a poor man's way of realizing this uh, quantum spin law effect, which is this uh, helical edge state. Uh, this is actually observed later by, by Andreas Young, who applied large parallel magnetic field to, to make this uh, uh, Zeeman split. Okay, so, so this is a situation where we start with an insulator, but on the edge, we can create this uh, edge mode. So I was wondering, would something similar happen? So we did the calculation, and indeed, if you take the Dirac system, such as uh, the uh, sodium uh, uh, and uh, uh, so this will indicate the, the split band. Uh, for example, if it's split at zero, in the bulk, the, the band will be split. Right? But near the edge, one goes up and one goes down. And this crossing uh, is there. Right? So in this case, we have exactly this uh, same situation as uh, graphene or the quantum hall. Uh, quantum uh, spin Hall effect, and there will be a surface. The surface would have a chiral, what well, well, helical uh, metal, right? Unfortunately, if we apply this to uh, wild semi metal, uh, there's no protection for this uh, crossing, and uh, in general, it can't work for now. Okay, this is protected by kind of inversion symmetry, it turns out. So, our picture is, uh, is the, then we have to make up a story. So, the story is that perhaps at, a, at this phase transition at 90 Tesla. Uh, initially, the chemical potential is here, but somehow it moves into this uh, into this uh, surface mode, and it creates this uh, surface metal. Right? So that's just a story, and we'll probably never be proven right or wrong because it's very hard to do experiments. Okay, so in the remaining uh, uh, five minutes or so, uh, let me uh, talk about this uh, uh, this second topic, which is what happens in the zirconium uh, catalyst. So as promised, I call this a, a magical Dirac material. It's a, really a theorist's dream of realizing a, a Dirac material. Uh, so this, uh, the, uh, the structure is that it has chains along its direction uh, that are coupled, uh, that are something like this. It's is a very strange compound. And it's stacked in the, in the, in the Z direction in this way. Okay. So it, we can think of it as a layered material. Now, the amazing thing is that this thing has a direct state at the zone center with a very small gap. And this, uh, this state actually moves with temperature. Okay, so this is seen directly by both emission. So this is the both emission, uh, this is a direct home. Right, the both emission sees the, uh, uh, mainly sees the occupied state. So at high temperature, this guy happens to be just uh, a little bit uh, bowl like. Uh, as you raise the temperature, uh, this guy moves down. And eventually becomes electronized. So, as a function of temperature, you have a transition between a, a whole dope uh, semiconductor and electron dope semiconductor. Okay. All right, so, uh, so let's just take this as a fact. And oh. yeah, and yeah. How do I give it? Close with the cross. Hmm? Close with the cross. Okay. Um, right. So, um, so um, yeah. So as a consequence of this motion, there's a famous uh, peak in resistivity when the direct point moves through the Fermi surface at 100 uh, Kelvin or so. Okay. And they measure the mobility and the density. You can see from the Hall effect, you can see the change of size. And eventually, the carry density is very low, 10 to the 17. And the mobility is very high, 10, more than 10 to the 5. Uh, half a million mobility right, for these uh, particular materials. So, so these guys uh, who are able to grow very high mobility materials. And it makes a big difference. Now, even though the structure it looks two dimensional, it's stacked with up layers. Uh, the electrons actually are very three-dimensional. They move in three dimension. And you can see this because it, they have done quantum oscillations. Right? So this is cyclotron orbit. And they see quantum oscillation with field in all three directions. Right? So when the field is parallel to the plane, you're making motion this way. Right? So this, this shows that the electrons are moving coherently across the plane. <laughs> Getting more and more persistent. I think it's a signal for me to stop talking. <laughs> you could signal from me. Yeah, yeah. So it, you can actually get the effective mass. For example, 
In the z direction, the effective mass is about two and a half free electron mass. In perpendicular direction, it's ridiculously small, right? Less than one percent of the electron mass. This is a, because you're near this uh, bottom of the direct right point, and the Fermi's area is very, very small. Okay, so this is your ideal a single. You have a single gapped direct uh, thing with very high mobility. Right? It's a theory. And so here's the main observation. They see a Hall plateau. Uh, so, in my so first of all, the density is so low that you can reach the extreme quantum level, namely the lowest Landau level, uh, with uh, one and a half Tesla. Okay, you don't have to go to a magnet lab. Right? Our magnet can get you. Right. And uh, uh, now, uh, you know, beyond this point, you can see that the, there's a plateau in the in the Hall conductivity, rho x y. But importantly. The rho x x uh, basically goes to zero. This has never been seen before, right? So you have a situation where you have a quantized hall rho x x and the zero uh, rho x y. Uh, rho x x. Okay. And uh, so, so this suggests that you have an integer quantum hall, right? lowest that right? Now, there's been two previous discussion about uh, the, the trivial case is just stacking of quantum layers if I have a layer system. And for example, the paper by Balin and Fisher. That, but what that requires is that the uh, popping between the layers has to be less than the uh, than the uh, omega c. Okay. Now, like all good things in, in condensed matter physics, uh, everything goes back to Bert. Right? So Bert has already anticipated this uh, what, 30 years ago, right? And uh, he says that okay, even in the opposite limit, when the hopping is bigger than than the uh, and theta, which is what we have, uh, you can still have uh, quantum Hall effect. But what you need is to have a periodic structure. Right? You need something periodic uh, in, the, in the z direction. Okay? Because otherwise, you have a metal in the z direction, and you can never uh, cap out this uh, thing. Okay, so this is uh, where he published this very obscure journal. I don't know why. Uh, right, so you need something with period. Uh, so in that case, he predicts that uh, the resistivity xy it says your quantum multiplied by lambda cube, whatever lambda cube is the period of this extra structure. Right? So I think that answers your question about, about this uh, really quantum effect. Now, in our case, this hopping in the perpendicular direction, because the mass is about two electron mass, is well, it's large, 100 milli electron. So it's much bigger. Right? So it really should be thought of as a three dimensional electron. Yes. Almost, almost that. Okay. So they so now from this quantized level they can they can since they know the thickness of the sample they can figure out what this lambda q is and it turns out to be these numbers five theta five or, depends on the sample which makes sense because it depends on a k Fermi so the idea is that uh, so where does this periodic structure comes from the natural candidate is that uh, we have a charge density wave right in the z direction because electrons is basically one dimensional. Right, so we would form a charge density wave in the z direction with some kf. So if you look at this, they can compare, since they know exactly the k Fermi from the quantum oscillation, you can compare k Fermi with lambda q. And you can see this is all basically a factor of two difference. Right? So therefore, this ratio of the 2 pi over lambda q is actually closer to kf. Right? So this suggests that you're actually uh, making this charge density wave. Furthermore, the interlayer spacing is uh, 0.725. So this lambda q is actually close to four times the interlevel spacing and eight. So you see it goes from four to eight depending on sample. So it suggests that this charge sense wave is actually commensurate with the layers uh, stacking, which which again makes sense because in principle, once you're in the quantum limit, the KF in the Z direction depends on the magnetic field. So it should move. KF should move. And um, but if, because it's stacked, so it makes sense that this 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 uh, lambda Q lambda Q is, is stuck to the to the lattice, this pin to the lattice. And in that case, you would see this quantum Hall effect only over narrow region in magnetic field, because otherwise you go out of the gap. And that's exactly what you see. By the way, just yesterday they informed me that they found another sample with where this ratio is nine. So it's, uh, now we have four, eight, and nine uh, in, the, uh, in the commensurate ratio. Okay, so I think that goes down. Oh, there's an, uh, just as an additional effect, that uh, if you go up in further in field, Around uh, six tesla, seven tesla, there's a metal and transition. You can see the fanning out, which is the satisfied some scaling curve. So the question is: Is this magnetic free cell 
or is it a bigner crystal? Because we know that if, if very low density, uh, in this quantum limit, you may have a bigger crystal. So there are all kinds of uh, interesting physics that may be showing up here. OK, so this is my summary since uh, Ying is standing up. I'll give you two examples of, of what I would call a cylindrical uh, surface metal. Right? In the tendon diacetyl, you may have helical surface mold. This is quite speculated, but I think this is uh, quite firm. We may have a first example of a three-dimensional quantum Hall effect in the quantum Hall effect. In this case, of course, there is a, a chiral system. So this is a little bit different from the uh, surface state, uh, topological surface state, because the top, the bulk is insulating, but the top and bottom are also insulating. You just have a metal on the, on the side. Okay? And so now I think people are going to search, the coal mean that MIT has gotten crystal from, from China is going to see, try to search directly for this uh, charge density. So to the last part, do you see now?